All right, lots of stuff going on here. <clears throat> you should have your roof done, right? Uh, you can do faces um, all the way around the main roof. However, the gables need to be a separate fascia operation. Okay, so do all the horizontal joints in, in one operation <clears throat> and then start over again, do the separate fascia, uh, the gables in a, a separate operation, still with the offset though, because uh, we're going to get into how to do these returns down here. Uh, the chimney, once you get your roof all done, you can go into uh, your south elevation and measure uh, 10 feet over from the chimney and then two feet down to come up with the height to the top of your chimney and adjust the top of chimney level uh, to whatever that is. And then uh, you remember corner boards from last semester? Um, let's see. Oh, I want the top view. There we go. Um, well, I can't, can't show it to you there. Let me hide this. I'll just do a temporary. Okay. If you remember corner boards, we did them. They are one inch thick, five and a half inches across the front, and then three and a half here, because we would use a, a five quarter by four and a five quarter by six. So they're one inch thick. This line right here is three and a half. This outside line is five and a half on the front side. And uh, they go, the, the inner corner here goes on the sheathing, the exterior side of the sheathing. And so I did one sketch, got it in place, locked it in place, drew me a temporary line, mirrored it over to the other side, drew another temporary line here, and then mirrored both of them down. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I extruded them all the way down, just until they all went into the roof. Okay, I didn't worry about it, cutting them off or anything. I just took them all down into the roof in one operation. Then I put a... Um, I put a sheet metal roof. I created me a sheet metal roof. Well, it's getting kind of hard to pick it because it's very, very thin. Uh, tab. It won't let me tab and pick it. Anyway, I created a sheet metal roof and and made the outside edges of it flush with the outside of the corner boards. Okay, and it's like a one sixteenth of an inch thick. It's very thin. <clears throat> okay. Then I I uh, <clears throat> I loaded a one by six fascia and put it around uh, underneath the metal roof. Okay, and then I joined the fascia and corner boards all together with the join command. Uh, when I created these things, I, I created me a new color for my exterior trim, and I copied one of the Anderson wood white exterior, something like that. I copied it and made a new color uh, for my exterior wood, so that, that's going to make all my exterior wood that white color. Then I, I got brought this chimney shroud in from uh, Revit City. You can look it up, metal chimney shroud adjustable, and bring it in. And uh, once you put it in place, you can adjust the size of it, uh, the the length and the width of it, and it just goes right on top of that roof, okay? So that got the chimney taken care of. All right, now let's look at these returns. And uh, when we look at them in elevation, when we go to print our drawings, they're going to look good. Okay, we, we got an extra little line right there 
from the roof and having a difficult time getting these things to join together. But I think when we get those in, um, they'll <clears throat> they'll look good enough on our drawing at a quarter inch scale. Okay. So how do we build these things? I had to scale some stuff from the drawing, and I'm I'm making them two and a half feet long. Let's go back to 3D view. And basically, it's another roof that I have sketched. Okay. And so I had to play with my heights a little bit, and it, it's a sketched roof. It did not pick walls to core or anything like that. <clears throat> and uh, let me go into my edit footprint and let's see. I think I did them on uh, second ceiling. Yeah. Okay, so I sketched it out. It th This outside edge here meets up with the inside of the fascia of the main roof. Okay. And then this backside will meet up, in this case, with the brick. If it's one of your other ones, it's going to meet up with... You could do it with the sheathing if you wanted to. Technically, it's going to go all the way back to the sheathing, even on this wall, but I'm not going to trim the brick around it. Uh, to make sure of that, okay? The length, I made it two foot six inches long and one foot <clears throat> out from the wall. In this case, because I've got a, <clears throat> we're on a, a, a door, um, a gable wall, so it comes out one foot from the finished surface or four inches from the fascia of the main roof. So when we get around, to the walls that have other finishes, the sizes are going to be the same, just that's going to come off of the finished wall. This one, I made a slope. I did 912. That kind of worked out right. I think that's still going to work. I'm not totally sure about that, but that's an easy fix if it doesn't. And I'll, before I finish these series of videos, I'm going to show you that. Okay, on this wall, I made it 1012, which is the same slope as this main roof because they have to join together. And then you kind of have to create it and then see what your height difference is here. And uh, it'd be easier to do it in an elevation view or a section view. And then you adjust the height of this roof to match the other roof. You could try the align tool. You might be able to get the align tool to work also. The problem with it is that when we create these roofs, we pick them off of the walls. So the base offset is based on the wall. This one, because we sketched it, the base offset is based on the sketch lines. Okay, so it took a little figuring out to do that. Um, but you get it. You get it so that this panel right here is flush with your main roof. It, it's still going to show up a line. You you can use a join command. You can't join roofs, but you can use join command to uh, to try and mash those up. And it's just a graphics thing. It's 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 pretty close, and then our drawing it's going to be all right. Okay, then you can put a fascia on the front of that with the same so that it lines up with this fascia. Okay. Then on the end, I just did a model in place. Uh, let's edit it in place. I, I, I sketched it on the end here to match up with the sheathing. Um, to match up with the bottom of the sheathing, the inside of the fascia, bottom of fascia here back to the brick. And then I extruded it three quarters of an inch in, but only uh, like one two fifty sixth of an inch out. Okay, because I wanted it, I wanted it to cover the end of the roof just enough so that it covered it. Okay, you can make it bigger than one two fifty six. Maybe you'll get rid of that line. I don't know. Let's let's try that and see.
yeah, so it's still it's so thin, it's it's not getting rid of that line. But I'm I'm okay with that because in a drawing, uh, that's not going to show up. I don't think when we print a drawing, we'll look at that and see as we go along. We may have to may have to play with that a little bit more. Well, you can play with that and see. Okay, and so you may have to adjust your uh, your fascia a little bit to come out so that, yeah, <clears throat> see, I've, I've, I've pulled it out and it's already starting to show. I wanted it to be as flush with the end of the roof as I could get it. That's, that's my thing. Okay, and then a fascia across it. <clears throat> After that's in, then you can apply this fascia as as one operation. <laughs> Excuse me. And then uh, once you get it in place, uh, and I'm using the same offset as I used over on this roof, you do a modified mitering, and you click on the endpoint of it and change it into horizontal because it's going to stick down through the through the soffit. Okay, if it has a plumb cut on the end or a vertical cut, so you change the the modifying to horizontal or perpendicular, either no, perpendicular probably wouldn't work either. So I made it horizontal, and it, it still it cuts it off at the at the level that you've created it at. Okay, which it's going to be it's covering up anyway. Okay, as you can see there. Now soffits. To make soffits easier, I created a new level, and I called it bottom of soffit. And it's a half of an inch up from the bottom of my fascia of the main roof. So if we come over here, this is the level here. It's a half inch up from the bottom of my fascia. Okay. And I created the soffit on that level. So it boundary. Oh, I closed the window now. Um, bottom of soffit. <clears throat> okay, and if you if you remember using this thing when you when you go to edit it, you you do pick roof, and you can click on your roof and it'll pick up your roof edges. You can try pick wall and core. I ended up having to go around and manually aligning all of these lines because I want them on the outside edge of the sheathing. Uh, irregardless of what wall type it is okay and you want to make sure that that picks up the edge of the roof or the inside of the fascia you're just gonna have to check all those lines all the way around okay when you get to here <clears throat> excuse me you want to bring it on around to the end of your uh, your your cornice return there and that becomes one enclosed section and then you do the same on this side. I, I have it modified this end because I haven't put that, that cornice in yet. And then stop it at the chimney because it doesn't want to go through the chimney um, as it comes on around there, okay? Which brings me back to the chimney. Um, normally, our chimneys are hollow, you know, but because we've got this roof join right here, I couldn't cut all of the roof out. So let me hide these again so you can see. Um, there's my little roof cap thing. It's very, very thin. I just made a, a, a roof type, made it very thin. I gave it a metallic like color. All right. So. I was able to do vertical opening through this part of the roof inside of the chimney wall. I could not get this one to cut out because this roof is joined together to it. Uh, you may have better luck with that than me. I don't know. But since we're not going to be doing any section drawings through the fireplace this time, it's not that critical. Okay, not not so you wouldn't ever do that, but <clears throat> you, I guess we could edit the footprint of that roof 
to take it out, that would probably work. I didn't try that, but um, that that might would work. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so let's go back. I think that's pretty much it. I've still got, oh, the subfascia down here on the bottom. You can use the actual fascia tool to do that. And I did that here in section nine. I came up with my measurements that I needed. And basically what I did is I measured from the very top edge of the roof down to the bottom of my fascia. Well, when I did it before, yeah, that's right. Seven and 35 sixty fourths down. And then in to the wall, which is 11 and three eighths. And then you'll activate your fascia command. Uh, and I, I did it. I mean, I did it in 3D, but I had it and my, my section window open at the same time. <clears throat> and so you put in that vertical offset and the horizontal offset, they're both negative values. And you go around and you click the edge of the roof. And these were, I did these two on the, uh, uh, where the wood siding is. And I, I placed them in. And then I came over to here because it stops it short at this valley point right here. And so what you can do, and I, I found it easier to do that, select it and go into an elevation view, and then grab the handle. And then when you go to start to drag it, hold down your shift key, and that constrains you to horizontal or vertical, and just drag it over until it, it lines up with the edge of the brick wall, and then drop it, and that extends it out to the brick. Okay, so that's an easy way to pop your fascia in. Now, when we get around on the brick wall i haven't checked it yet but that <clears throat> that horizontal offset may be a little bit different um let's see i need a section through a brick wall Um, yeah, because the fascia is going to go here. So that's an actual one foot that you would use for that. Um, so let's let's do one here. Fascia. One by six. All right. So that's a minus seven thirty five sixty fourth inch. Minus one foot. And then when you're picking your roof, make sure you're picking the edge of the roof. Okay, so that one is um, that one is wood there. So yeah, I can stop that. Now I can come back to here and let's see if I can join those. Nope. Okay. So I will have to edit. And so one of those needs to be a little longer. Uh, 
I, I can try the join again. Let's see. No, it doesn't like joining faces. How about that? That worked. Okay, so that's how you do the subfascia. Um, I will work on some other stuff. And, you know, I haven't tried it yet. By golly, let's try mirroring this. And let's just go ahead and select. All three of those parts. Mira. Gotta be sure. Well, I was hoping I could hit a center line. Let's try the other mirror command. Come on. Okay. Better probably done in an elevation view. What do you know? Well, it was pretty close. Didn't quite line up right. Hmm. Okay, so maybe the center of the window is not the best, uh, the best choice. But you can play around that and see what, uh, see what comes up with it. Okay.